Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor and I share these what's for dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully motivate y'all and give you some new meal ideas. So if you like these kinds of videos, I hope that you will subscribe down below so you can come back and see my future videos. I've been doing these for years, so I will have a playlist linked in the description box if you want to go back and watch some of my older videos. And as always, any recipes that I mention will be linked in the description box. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. Friday night was pizza night. The kids had these little mini non rounds and they got to pick what they wanted on theirs. They did ham and pepperoni and cheese and then they had some fresh veggies on the side, cucumbers, sweet peppers, tomatoes, carrots with some ranch and then I used these like flatbreads to make a pepperoni and cheese pizza and a ham and feta pizza and this was for Andy and myself but also the kids ate some of this too because those little mini ones like one each was not enough food for them and then me and Andy had this with some veggies on the side as well ham and feta is probably like my favorite pizza topping it's so good Saturday night we had a lemon pepper salmon so I took three salmon fillets and laid them on a sheet pan that I lined with some parchment paper and then I brushed each piece with some melted butter and then for seasoning I went in with some garlic powder some badia complete and then lemon pepper seasoning and then I had sliced up one lemon and put two slices on top of each piece of salmon and this went in the oven on 425 for about 20 minutes To go with our salmon, I made a can of green beans the way I always do. I put about a tablespoon of butter in there and then a little bit of chicken bouillon, a little bit of garlic powder, and a little bit of badia complete. And I just let that simmer on like a medium low. And then I also brought some salted water to a boil to cook this Israeli couscous or pearled couscous, whatever you want to call it, because I'm going to be making some Parmesan couscous. Once the couscous was done, I drained it and then added it back to the pot and put it back on the eye, but I had turned the eye off, but there was still a little bit of heat, you know? Um, and then to it, I added about a tablespoon of butter, some garlic powder, some salt, some pepper, some parsley, and about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And I just stirred that around really well and the, like the warmth from the pan still being hot and the couscous and yeah, it just melted it all together. And here's that all plated up. Lemon pepper salmon is definitely one of our favorite ways to eat salmon. It's just so good together. And this Parmesan couscous is one of my favorite sides to make. It's super simple and delicious. Sunday night, I tried a new recipe for lasagna soup. This recipe comes from Gigi's Homemaking on TikTok. She also has a YouTube channel and a video of this recipe. So I will leave all her links down below so you guys can go check her out. I love her like TikTok. She makes a lot of good food on there. Um, so yeah, make sure you go check that out. So for this, I started off by browning one pound of Italian sausage. Once that was all browned, I used a little paper towel trick and soaked up any of that excess grease. And then I didn't change much with this recipe. I pretty much followed her recipe. But one thing I had to change was I needed more garlic. There was no minced garlic in this recipe. So I went in with like three cloves of minced garlic and just let that cook for about a minute. So then I actually had the kids helping me make this soup. So you might see some little hands pop in the screen. But we added in about half of a carton of beef broth. We're going to save the other half for like if you want to thin out the leftovers um, and just put that in the fridge. But we did half a carton of beef broth, 32 ounces of chicken broth, 
And then for seasonings, I use some garlic powder, tomato bouillon, seasoned salt, basil, onion powder, oregano, and Italian seasoning. And then I added in three quarters of a jar of pizza sauce, a can of diced tomatoes, a can of crushed tomatoes. That was something different that I added just to give it a little bit more tomatoes. And then a whole box of lasagna noodles that we broke into pieces. And then I just brought that to a boil after mixing everything together really well. Once it came to a boil, I stirred it around, put on a lid, reduced the heat to a medium low, and let that simmer for eight minutes. While that was simmering, I worked on mixing together my ricotta mixture. So for this, I mixed together one 15 ounce tub of ricotta cheese, some garlic powder, some seasoned salt, a little bit of mozzarella cheese and a little bit of Italian style shredded cheese. And I just mix that all together really well and set it aside for when our soup was done simmering. Early in the day, I also made this crusty Italian bread. It's one of my favorite bread recipes to make. I have a video on this, so I will leave that link down below if you're interested in that. After the eight minutes, I removed the lid from the soup, gave it a good stir, and then I slowly stirred in one cup of heavy cream, and I also added two heaping tablespoonfuls of that ricotta mixture. And then I just let this continue to simmer for about two minutes or until the lasagna noodles were fully cooked. This was delicious. I just served it with a little bit more of that ricotta mixture dolloped on top. So good. And then we had that crusty bread on the side as well, as I said. Put some of the Chef Chamois garlic butter on that to go with it. Definitely recommend this recipe. Make sure you go check out Gigi's TikTok and YouTube channel. I will have it linked down below. It is Monday night and tonight for dinner we are doing chicken nachos and Andy asked that it be like cut up chicken and not shredded chicken. So I've got some chicken tenders here. I did the little trick to remove the like tendon piece that stays hard. Um, I will leave a link to a video on how to do that if you are interested in that. And so I did that and then I have just seasoned the tenders all over with some taco seasoning and some Goya like perfect seasoning. And then I sprayed them with a little bit of this olive oil spray. And then I've got them on my air fryer pan. And then it's gonna go in the air fryer at 350 for probably between 15 and 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna check it at 10 and see if I wanna flip it halfway through. I've never done tenders like this. In the air fryer, I usually just do like frozen tenders. Um, not just like regular fresh unbreaded kind. So I'm gonna cook them that way and then when they're done I will cut them up and we'll make some nachos with them. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the air fryer. I just diced up this chicken and then we had it on top of some chips with some salsa, refried beans, pico, some of us had lettuce, and then of course the Rico's nacho cheese sauce is our favorite nacho sauce. Tuesday night I made Swedish meatballs. So in my bowl of my KitchenAid I have 
one pound of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. And then to that I added one cup of whole milk, one cup of breadcrumbs, some salt, some pepper, some allspice, some grated onion, which oh I will never grate onion again. Next time I will definitely just dice it and then also two large eggs. And I mix that around with a fork for just a minute to start getting it combined and then I put the paddle attachment on my KitchenAid and let the KitchenAid mix it together for about a minute to get it really well combined. This recipe I am basing off of a recipe from Binging with Babish. Um, I did double his recipe, one, and then two, I am not following his method for actually cooking the meatballs or even like preparing them, but I did follow the ingredients that he used. So I'm just gonna cook them the way I always cook meatballs in the air fryer. But right here, I am rolling them out with my hands. I tried to keep them all about the same size, about an inch and a half. And some of them are going on the sheet pan that I lined with parchment paper because as I said, I did double it and I doubled it for the purpose of freezing half of them. So this made about 34 meatballs. Half of them went on my air fryer tray and then into the air fryer at 375 for about 15 minutes flipping halfway through. To make the cream sauce, I started off by adding two tablespoons of butter to my pot. And then once that was melted, I added in two tablespoons of flour and let that cook for about two minutes until it started to brown. And then I slowly stirred in one cup of beef broth and let that come to a boil. Once I came to a boil, I stirred in one teaspoon of soy sauce and a quarter cup of heavy cream, as well as some salt, pepper, and allspice. And then I let that continue to cook over a low heat for about five minutes. To go with this, I made some zucchini. My favorite way to make zucchini is in my cast iron pan. So I like to add about a tablespoon of butter and a little bit of olive oil, let that melt and get nice and hot. And then I add in my zucchini. You can cut it however you like. This is how I like to cut it. And then this time I just seasoned it with some Badia Complete, but sometimes we also like to put Tony's on there as well to give it a little bit of spice. But I thought the Badia on it with this recipe, like that with the Swedish meatballs would be good. So then I just let it cook until it's as tender as you like it. Here's what the meatballs looked like when they came out of the air fryer. And then to go with this, I made some Instant Pot mashed potatoes. I've made these many times here on my channel, so I will leave a video of those linked down below. And then instead of the lingonberries, we just have some cranberry sauce to go on the side. So we got our mashed potatoes with our gravy and then our meatballs. Elijah tried zucchini and actually liked it this night. But yeah, this was really good. And I'm glad that I doubled the meatballs because it wasn't that much more work. And then in the future, I will have quick meatballs to pull out of the freezer. It is Wednesday and tonight for dinner we are having taco spaghetti, which is a family favorite. I've shared this many times on my channel, but it has been a while since I've made it. Um, and I think, was it you that requested it? Yes. Lily requested that we have it this week. 
So I'm starting off by bringing some salted water to a boil. I'm gonna cook um, about a pound of lasagna, not lasagna, why did I say lasagna? About a pound of spaghetti noodles. Um, and then I'm browning some ground beef with some taco seasoning, about one packet of taco seasoning is what I add to it. I'm just gonna get that browned up and then I will be back to show you what I add to it. My noodles are going. I'm not gonna let them cook until they're like all the way as cooked as I want them to be because this is going to go into the oven. So I just let them get most of the way cooked through um, and then I will drain them and add them to my casserole dish. I've got a nine by 13 here. I've got my oven preheating to 350. And here I've got my ground beef that is done. And to this, I'm going to add one can of enchilada sauce. It's a 10 ounce can. One 10 ounce can of Rotel. And then I've got half a cup of sour cream or you could do um, like half a cup of plain Greek yogurt. Works the same. Sometimes I use one or the other, it like depends on what I have on hand. Today I have sour cream because lately I've been buying vanilla Greek yogurt and you don't want to put that in this. So that and then nacho cheese or you could do Velveeta cheese um but the last time I made this I made it with the um nacho cheese this is about one can of the Rico's nacho cheese which is like a 15 ounce can I've just I buy the big can at Sam's Club and freeze it so I just squeeze that in here and it takes a lot less time to cook then when I use the cube Velveeta, I mean you could use the Velveeta cheese packets too if you wanted to. Um, you probably need to do two of those cheese packets if you're going to use that. Um, or you could use like the cube Velveeta. Um, you just have to wait for like that to melt when you use that. So that's why I like using the nacho cheese now. Because um, it just, you don't have to wait for it to melt. It's already, it's already the right consistency. You just mix it around and then when your noodles are done cooking you can toss everything together in your casserole dish so that's why we like using the Rico's now my original recipe was with Velveeta but we tried it with this last time and really enjoyed it with the Rico's nacho cheese so I'm just gonna get this all stirred together and then once my noodles are done get everything in that 9x13 get this topped with some cheddar cheese and bake it for about 30 minutes at 350 And here is the taco spaghetti out of the oven. It's super delicious. I just let it cool for about five minutes and then we serve it up. Sometimes we'll put like some guacamole or something on top, but this night we just kept it simple and ate it as it was. It is Thursday and tonight for dinner, as you can see, we ordered pizza. I was supposed to make soup, but we got flu shots, and COVID shots yesterday, like our COVID boosters and I don't know, I've been feeling nauseous today and didn't really want to make the soup, so Andy suggested we order pizza, so that's what we did. We got extra ham on this one. We've got Andy's pizza with his feta, Philly steak, tomatoes, and the Alfredo sauce. And then this one is just pepperoni and cheddar cheese. Yeah. 
So we are going to have pizza tonight and I will make the buffalo chicken soup at some point. But yeah, just keep it easy with that. And that is going to be it for this week's What's For Dinner. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you plan on trying any of these recipes in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.